After watching the two most rotund individuals put on a boxing clinic that puts most other boxers to shame, I decided to look at a boxing game. Now, boxing is a really old sport, so naturally boxing video games would be a part of the dawn of video games. Now, what you're looking at right now is the first boxing video game, and practically the first fighting game ever called Heavyweight Champ. Boxing for Atari is the first ever boxing game on console, and yes, this does look like a uterus fight, but after this, the floodgates opened. I mean, you have Nintendo develop boxing games with Mike Tyson. Nintendo developed boxing games without Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson boxing games without Nintendo. Ali, Foreman, Holyfield, George Bush vs. John Kerry, boxing games with Michael Jackson, and boxing games where your fighters are blown in between rounds. What is going on? I'm not making this up. EA Sports would join in on the fray with Tough Man contests. A game based on the actual events where amateurs would go up against real pros like Butterbean, and they end just like you'd expect. People actually died doing this, by the way. The game itself is just whatever. It's just a bad super punch out. EA would try years later with Foes of Ali, which looks horrible today, but at the time it was pretty good with reliving Ali's toughest fights and has a lot of nuance that makes it ahead of its time. Most people haven't even heard of this because it was exclusive to 3DO, which is the equivalent to having high caliber ammo but having a super soaker as your rifle. But this game would be the start of the Knockout King series, which is what a lot of people are more familiar with. Knockout Kings was a solid series. Before every boxing game tried to emulate boxing, but it was just limited by the technology at the time. Knockout Kings, specifically Knockout Kings 2001 for the PS2 was the first game to make this CTE simulator look accurate, damn it. The series would continue yearly until 2003, which was a little weird because it was a GameCube exclusive despite none of the other entries even being on the GameCube. I have no idea why this is and I couldn't find anything on it. But for the 2004 installment of EA's boxing series, we would get a rename to Fight Night, and the year after we would drop the years from the title. Good. What is this? A school heading? I don't want any dates in my titles. The Fight Night series is most famous for adding full punch control where you simulate your punches with the right analog stick, and you can even wind back to throw haymakers. That along with career modes where you can be managed by the Burger King himself made literally every other boxing game obsolete. We would go on with Fight Night until Fight Night Round 4. EA's next game after that was truly something special. So as far as the titles go, we got rid of the years, and now we got rid of the rounds. Now we just have Champion, Fight Night Champion. When first seeing this game, you'll be surprised to see that the game doesn't look half bad. From the entrances to the damage to the fighter's face, which can open up some pretty bad cuts. You even have ring girls for all of you who like TNA, and I ain't talking about the wrestling company. This looks like a game that holds up even to this very day. As far as the gameplay goes, they've done a lot. The total punch control is gone completely from the previous entries. I know some people love this feature, but I was never too big on it simply because you have to do these motions that are just too intricate to pull off in a fast paced fight compared to just pressing buttons. They've replaced it with full spectrum punch control, where you just flick the stick in certain directions to do certain punches. This works, though I still prefer to use the buttons. The big emphasis on gameplay, in my opinion, is defense and positioning. The game gives you tools to utilize this, like swaying, sidestepping, and weaving. Using these tools, you can effectively end fights faster than a skippable YouTube ad. Big shot there. Big headshot puts him down. Now, stepping is as simple as flicking the left stick. Leaning is done by holding on one and moving the left stick, and weaving is done by quarter circle motions. Now this has drawn some criticisms from fans because quarter circles are more associated with traditional fighting games, which are usually more demanding when it comes to certain inputs to execute moves. When people play Fight Night or any of these other combat sports games, they're looking for something more grounded and simple, which is fine, but I don't think weaving breaks any fun a casual player might have. They would never really use it anyway. Weaving, along with everything else gives this game a high skill ceiling. When you slip a punch, the screen zooms in, indicating you have an opportunity for a counter. When that screen zooms in, just know that... <laughs> I'm in danger! Wow! 
combining your strikes with head movement is the most satisfying thing in the whole game. This goes for blocking as well, slowly breaking someone's block and getting that one shot to slip through. The exact opposite when someone's punch glances off your block and you punish them for it. This is boxing. Is it perfect? No, there are no feints in this game, which is actually pretty crazy as fainting in real life is such a pivotal part of combat sports. And I think I found an exploit while blocking. You can repeatedly hit the block button and refresh your block for lack of better words. Meeting your block is really hard to break through. But what is here is good for the most part. Using someone like Muhammad Ali to pick apart your opponent from range is one of my favorite things to do in this game. When it comes to game modes, Finite Champion goes into a different direction than not only any boxing game, but any EA Sports game. The game is rated M for Mature, so you better put your kids to bed when you play this. The rating mostly comes from its story mode. Yes, before we ever had Longshot and Madden, and before we ever had Spike Lee in NBA 2K. A friend of freak. <laughs> what the hell? We have Champion mode here, which follows the story of Andre Bishop an up-and-coming boxer who goes through hurdles to eventually fight this game's big bad, Isaac Frost. I like the story, though it's super cliche. I mean, Isaac Frost is essentially Ivan Drago. He's this unstoppable guy that beats everyone up and eventually beats up someone close to you, so now you want to take him down. Just like Rocky IV. I mean, your coach is Mick. Like, he's called something else in the game, but he's literally Mick. End of the round there. Kick. The judges ain't even watching this fight. I can see it in their eyes. The queen fucked us. We're not winning any decisions tonight. Means you gotta knock this guy on the canvas. Understand? Knock him on his ass. I'm not going to hear any different. But yeah, we have an actual story with actual cinematography. Like, look at this transition. You know they had my boy working hard on those keyframes. This story mode does a good job of mixing up the gameplay, as opposed to just fighting regular fights over and over and over again until the end. There are some challenges to each fight. Like in one fight, I broke my right hand so I can only throw on my left. Another fight, the ref has been paid off and is counting our body shots as low blows, so we have to headhunt. You even get thrown into prison where there are no rules and where ball punches and headbutts are legal. Also, bare knuckles too. I like how they also made the prisoners worse than the boxers because, you know, why wouldn't they be? The prisoners just throw these haymakers that you could see coming from a mile away. Call an ambulance! Uh-oh, looks like they're not happy with me. We're really fucking impressed. Nighty night, bitch. Ew. Hey, you uh, you see where that M rating comes from? Honestly, I thought different stuff went down in these prison showers. This will all lead to a climactic fight with Isaac Frost. Hey, the atheists go to hell. No. How about the developers who designed the Isaac Frost fight? Straight to hell, to the boiler room of hell, all the way down. This guy just absolutely destroys you, like rocks you with one punch, kind of destroy. Like, did he load his gloves up with rocks like a damn Looney Tunes character? Oh! With right hand land. Oh! Two, two things. What a... Wow! He could be on the... Wow! Back with the right hand. Andre Bishop just... Wow! <laughs> wow! Damn! It's even worse when you consider this fight has four phases to it. You know the meme where it's like, current objective, survive. Well, that's literally the first phase of this fight. I have a whole folder called Isaac Frost, which is just filled with footage of him kicking my ass for two hours. What a difficulty spike this is, because nothing before this is ever anywhere near this difficult. This is a EA Sports game. Like, why is this one of the hardest bosses I've ever faced in my life? For one phase, you have to survive three rounds and land 75 body shots. This sucks. I actually had to cheat to get by this. When you throw illegal strikes, preferably dick punches, the ref briefly stops the fight to deduct a point. You can use this to your advantage when you get stunned and need time to recover. I mean, who really cares about point deductions when you're scripted to win by knockout in the end anyway? Although it is kind of funny because without context it makes us look like the bad guy. 
Like the average person is just tuning in on Showtime and they just see one guy punching another guy in the dick over and over again. Hours after hours of trying and you eventually get him and it's satisfying along with the ending. Champion mode is very good and it's probably the best story mode in any sports game. The other game mode is legacy mode, which is essentially career mode. This mode is not great, but it's not really terrible either. Much like this YouTube channel. You can use a real boxer or you can create your own. Oh wait, you can import your face into this? Oh hell yeah, it's time to break out the eye toy. I'll take it, even with my tiny alien head. The goal of this mode is to win championships and become the greatest of all time. That's all well and good, but the mode just doesn't really do much. You train, you fight, you recover. You train, you fight, you recover. You train, you fight, and you recover. There are some other things to consider, but it doesn't really matter. Like certain brands want to sponsor you. You get extra money from doing this, but money in this game is almost as worthless as a Toys R Us gift card. You can only spend it on your training camp. Training itself is hit and miss. You have to balance training with your fitness level. If you don't train effectively, then you pretty much get rocked by anything. These training mini games range from stuff I like to stuff that's uh dumb. And that's really it with legacy mode. The only other thing I can comment on is playing with a guy that has low stats just sucks. I get that's how it should be, but playing with Andre Bishop then going to a created fighter with low stats is like using Usain Bolt then being Ed from 90 Day Fiance the next day. Overall, legacy mode is serviceable, but pales in comparison to most other career modes, even previous Fight Night titles. Where's the Burger King, damn it? Fight Night Champion is overall a great game that set the standard for every boxing game that would be released in the future. Except wait, there weren't any boxing games after this. Why? Well, it's a multitude of things, really. When it comes to what I can find on the game's sales, Fight Night Champion is rather unimpressive. It debuted at number 10 on its release month and completely fell off the top 10 the month after. The game reviewed well, so the low sales weren't from bad critical reception. As I mentioned before, the game is rated M for Mature, which limits its audience as opposed to a T for Teen rating. Something else that has to be considered is that the sport of boxing itself just declined in popularity throughout the years. It's not at the same level it was when Knockout Kings was out, or when Punch Out was out, or even when that uterus boxing game was out. Disinterest in the sport would naturally lead to disinterest in the games especially when another combat sport is taking the world by storm, both in real life and in the video game realm. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the UFC, Dana White. Dana, thank you so much for being here. We're incredibly pleased to announce today the start of a new multi-year, multi-product partnership between EA Sports and the UFC. That makes two of us. After years of EA saying MMA isn't a sport and years of Dana White saying, EA sucks. They would both eventually get together to form a partnership. EA went back on their comments about MMA because, <laughs> and Dana White went back on his comments about EA because, now this impacts Fight Night simply because the team that makes Fight Night now puts all that effort into UFC. The UFC games are fine on their own, but haven't reached the fanfare that the Fight Night series has, and with stuff like this, can you really blame them? Now besides EA, has anyone else tried? Are we just banished to a realm where no boxing game can exist? Well, no, kind of. Steel City Interactive is an indie game developer that's creating a boxing game called Undisputed. It looks promising, but it's in early access and we really don't have any sort of release date, especially for consoles. So there's no real way to come to any sort of conclusion about this. But it's nice to know the genre isn't completely dead. Somewhat recently, EA developers have shown interest in another Fight Night, 
But whatever happens with Fight Night or boxing games in general, just know that it is really crazy that there's a boxing game with Michael Jackson in it. Wow, I mean, I can't believe it.